Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about variables. Now, if you're not very interested in math, if you don't like math, maybe you're not good at math and you're hearing the word variables and you're freaking out a little bit, don't worry. It's actually not as complex as it seems. A lot of people think of variables as, hey, we're going to be writing calculus. And to be totally honest, me, myself, like as my person, I don't know calculus. And I work with variables every single day, hundreds, maybe even thousands of them. And variables basically are just a way to store little pieces of data on your computer and then use them later. You can manipulate them, you can check them, you can tell your computer to execute a certain command based on a particular type of variable and the value that that variable holds. So let's take a look at what a variable looks like. And so I'm just going to create an HTML5 website here. And you know what? I don't need all that stuff. Let's call this variables, variables. And because we're not going to have any HTML in here, I mean, we would put it in here generally, but we're not going to. We're just going to write some basic JavaScript for now. So we're going to stick with a script tag. And down here, we're going to put another script tag. And so when we start talking about variables, really all we mean is a piece of data that we can swap in and out. And we do that with var. And this is very interesting that it's saying Django template. So let me quickly change that to regular HTML. There we go. And so we have a var declaration. This stands for variable. And var basically says, hey, JavaScript, just so you know, we're about to declare a variable. And then you give it a name. So whatever you want that name to be, is equal to, and then there's different ways of declaring different types of variables. And we'll get into this over time, so we're gonna keep it simple for now. So I'm just going to say, my name is Caleb. And let's make that a little bigger here. So I have a variable, it's called name, and the value is Caleb. And so we know of this alert function already, we'll talk much more about this down the road. If I just simply said, alert name, and I open this page in Google Chrome, you can actually see that it just says Caleb. That's all it does. And if I wanted to swap this out at any time, I could say Caleb Tallinn, save. I'm gonna go over here, hit refresh, it says Caleb Tallinn. You could even do more than that. So let's, let's create another variable and let's call it course. What course are we currently taking right now? We are taking JavaScript for beginners. And you can see that it wrapped onto a new line. That's actually okay. It's just because my font is a little too big here. Then underneath you could say alert course. And let's go ahead and refresh our page. And it says JavaScript for beginners. And so this is really all a variable is. Now you can reassign a variable at any time. So we're not using name anymore. I did mention earlier, semicolons are a thing. Generally this tells a computer that, hey, this is the end of the line and whatever comes after this is a new statement. So just as an example, we would not want to put these both on the same line like this. Because if we did that, and hit refresh, we're not going to see anything. In fact, you can actually right click inspect and you can see that we have an error in here. And let's open up our console and you can see we have an error in here. It says something that is too hard to read. There we go. Uh, uncaught syntax error, unexpected token var. And it tells us right exactly where it is. So if I click it, it says line 11 and it's showing me right here. So that's pretty cool. So that's a debugging little pro tip there for you. And so even my editor is saying, hey, something's not right here. And so what we wanna do is, usually we just put that on a new line and put a semicolon at the end. This is the simplest way of maintaining this. And if we click refresh again, it alerts us as expected, and there's no error in our console. And by the way, anytime you run into a JavaScript error, always open up your console and take a look at what that error is because it can tell you as a JavaScript developer what the problem actually is. Maybe it is something that the user did, maybe it's something the developer did. By the end of this course, you'll be able to know exactly whose fault something is. Usually it's the developers, they didn't implement something properly. Okay, so we have variable name and course, and we're just alerting this. Let's go ahead and overwrite our variable. Now we could simply do var course is equal to Python for beginners. And as I save this and go to refresh this page, it will now say Python for beginners. And so that works. So basically we've created one variable, we didn't use it at all, and then we overwrote the entire thing with a new value in here. Now because this variable has already been declared as a var, 
This gets into hoisting, a thing we'll talk about later down the road. We don't need to declare var again. It's already there. So we really only need to declare var once on a particular variable. And after that, we don't really need to do that anymore. So let's go ahead and save this and hit refresh. And it says Python for beginners. Console didn't complain. Things are looking good. All right, one more thing that we should go over is what is with this? So you see these quotation marks around there? There's two other ways to do this. So we could do, for example, var age. How old am I? Well, I'm 30. We could do this, and if I alert age and refresh this page, it says 30. And if I go in here and type age, it already seems to exist. It also gives me 30. And if I type in course in here, it already exists. So my browser understands that there are variables in here that are accessible to the console. And so now we're st sort of starting to interact with JavaScript in a script tag or a .js file if we were to move it to an external file. And over here, we can access some of these variables as well. So we're sort of starting to connect our editor and our browser's uh, terminal or the console. So we see here age does not have quotations around it. It can, it can have quotations around it. Uh, you can also see that the semicolon was basically optional. I didn't need it and that's okay because I was putting all my code on new lines and JavaScript is smart enough these days to understand that. For a good practice, let's go ahead and put that semicolon in there, in there and refresh our page. And it still says 30, it looks no different. But if I type in age here, you can see it has the quotations around it. This is a fundamental difference between different variable types. We will talk all about this down the road, but it is important to sort of get the idea right now that a variable, let's call a variable, a variable, actually let's call it var, var1. Anything that has a sentence or spaces in it, any sort of spaces like what you see in here, that needs to be in quotations. So we can't just put 30, 30, 30, 30, 30 with spaces in there and alert var1. This is going to give us an error. There we go, unexpected number. But if we put quotations around it, give this a refresh, it works. So at this point, you should be a little bit confused if you're brand new to JavaScript about what all this is about. So when we use quotations, this is called a string. So this is a string. And this is a type of variable that basically says, hey, this is a sentence. And then we have, let's say var2 in here is equal to just the number 30 or any number or 30.5, something like that. And this is called a number or in other programming languages, it's sometimes called an integer. Actually, in this case, it would be a float, but that's neither here nor there at this moment. We will get into that a little down the road. And JavaScript actually sums this up nicely as, and they say, oh, we don't care if it has a decimal point or not. We just care, is it a number? Is it not a number? And so when you're dealing strictly with a number, you do not need quotations around it. There are no spaces in there. You just have numbers and decimal points and that's it. No commas, no dollar signs, nothing like that. It is simply numbers and a period. So now if I go ahead and say, let's alert var2, and what I wanna do here is get rid of these. Refresh our page, it's going to say 30.5. And in here, if I type var2, you can see 30.5 has no quotation marks around it. Let's make that bigger. Has no quotation marks around it, but var1 does. And that's because this is a string. And var2 is a number. So why is that important right now? Great question. Well, as we're learning JavaScript right now, it's not important to us, but it will become important to us very, very soon. And I think the earlier people understand this sort of difference in a variable type, the better your programming is going to be down the road. So that's all there really is for this particular video. In the next one, let's go ahead and start merging some variables together so that you can actually see sort of how a variable is supposed to work. Because right now, these variables, I mean, we're hard coding them. So they're not really variables. We're just saying, hey, assign course is equal to JavaScript for beginners and then immediately overwrite it. So that's no use. A variable needs to be something that can change. And hey, if you don't fully understand this entire video, 
Don't worry about it, move on to that next one anyways, and eventually this will all just click into place. It becomes a lot easier once we actually start writing more JavaScript together.